Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to get better at Warzone, just plain and simple. Spectating my gameplay, playing with randoms. We're gonna be going through decision-making, crucial rotations, as well as just basic communication. Most of you guys are not utilizing in Warzone, and you honestly are just holding you back. All right, right now, we're deciding where to land at. Hydro is a very hot spot, so when you're coming in, get ready for a fight. And when you rotate away, get ready for a fight. Now, this gameplay is a little bit older. So you'll see the buy stations are in different spots. Of course, some of the glitches, as was mentioned, are, are a little different as well. A little older. And right here, all I'm doing is just analyzing what people around me are doing. I want to see what's going on around me before I make my move to start looting, just in case. Not to mention, secondly, it can help from rotations as well. If you want to go after active fights, you know where players are landing. If you want to avoid fights, you know where players are landing, so you can rotate the opposite way. Intel is everything in this game, and so many people just, again, lock it in in tunnel vision. And right here, I just want to point out how fast I am looting. This seems very strange for me to even say, but look, looting fast is crucial. It helps you with decision making. It helps you with momentum. You get in and out. You don't spend too much time. So many times we witness people loot, and they just sit there and stare at it. And that's just not the way to do it because you can get caught up. You can get pushed. And again, the more time you spend in the building, the more time enemies have to push you. And you have no idea because you're sitting there again, locked in on the loot. So tunnel visioning is just a huge mistake most players make. And it gets them caught, caught up more than they think. The problem with players breaking down their own gameplay is if they die they usually think it's just because right now i'm talking to chat they usually think it's just because the other team is better or they're cheating or whatnot but you have to remember every mistake you make in this game from from dropping till the end is a snowball effect if you are not developing oh, we got, momentum we got, we got, you are got, snowballing got, hard and right now again we're still just trying to get after our loadie so we're just split up a little bit and notice real quick on the mini map we're spread out but we're hitting different buildings and we're still close together to where one of us gets in the fight we have an angle on our teammates or we can at least rotate to our teammates quickly to help them out speaking of helping out your teammates guys make sure y'all leave a like on the video it helps tremendously spread this video throughout the world that way some of the random teammates you might come into contact with may be a little bit better than they currently are but for real it helps out drastically it's a great way to support for free and i would really love for this community to come over to the live streams over on kick.com slash savage underscore 2c monday through friday 11 to 3. but the links in the description guys as well as the pinned comment all right here we're buying loading now i wanted to just show this because i've never seen it before it's kind of dope but the loading actually broke the zip i didn't even know it was a possibility but here we are getting our load out get in get out get quick and we're moving on comms coming out from me my teammates you can't hear my comms unfortunately but we are coming together just taking some attempts now i'm predicting that he's going to go back to the zip line which is exactly what he does now originally i should have pushed up and got closer i just didn't anticipate him to get stuck and i didn't want him to run me over Just an easy three stacking thing right there. We're looting quickly. The, the, the mortar comes in, but we got you got to bail away. Now, we don't know if this is the same team or not. I wouldn't imagine it is. It could be. Players do dumb things all the time. Why would one guy take a vehicle and drive away? But you don't know. What we do know is the enemies have the high ground, and there, there are possibly more. We are playing quads right now, so the last thing we want to do is put ourselves in a dumbass fight out in the open. So we all grab the building, and here we have Crouch Walk and Timmy going right up the staircase, not really paying attention to a damn thing. Now, audio in this game is not the best. Come on, brother. There's no excuse for this right here. There's, there's none. You want to Crouch Walk up the stairs because you think someone's there? Fine, I get it, but... Doors were opening, people were jumping through windows. He definitely had to have heard something, unless he just plays on mute. And then even though I'm hit firing him in the side, he didn't even react. He just sat perfectly there. If you watch me die, if I get hit by surprise, I'm at least gonna flick on the enemy and try to do something. He was just completely unaware to surrounding. But still, we don't know if that was one of these guys' teammates or not. Challenging the enemy right here is not a really good decision. I run back to the door to close it. The reason why I close the doors when I'm in buildings, especially in an active fight, is if the enemy pushes through and the doors open, that's one less audio cue of the door going Pow, that we don't hear. That was a very bad sound effect, I know. So I want to go ahead and have the door closed so that I might hear his footsteps, or if I can't, 
I might hear the door. Just gives me one little extra cushion of comfort. So right now, my mind, we got to go ahead and get a pick. You don't have to get a knock, but you got to get a crack. The moment I get a crack and then Kwasi goes in and gets the kill on the guy on the top floor, I instantly go in and just capitalize on the fact that we outnumber the enemy now. They're down a player. They've got one knocked. So no matter what happens from here on out, we've got to win the fight. I tell you guys all the time, what you really want to do is, again, if you're in a 44 fight or if you're in any fight, even if you're outnumbered by one or two, if you get a knock and you feel like your numbers have kind of shifted and the odds may favor you, go ahead and push them unless it puts you in a real dumb position. I had smoke, so if the enemy would have started shooting me, I would have, like, did some kind of zigzag through the smoke down to protect me. It may or may not have worked, but that's a conversation for another day when we get into that situation. So you see me look in multiple directions. I'm listening to the call out. Teammates says South Wheat, Southeast. They see I station. So I'm peeking over there to see if there's anything that I need to be worrying about. Fortunately, there's not. Now, if you look at this fight, I bailed out because we saw a glint, right? So this isn't a fight I'd want to take at this range. All we're going to do, worst case scenario, is break all of our plates, knock the enemies, and they're going to res. It's just an unnecessary fight, and it also puts you in a position to get third party from the other teams that are possibly at Hydro, especially with this buy station right here. So if you want to fight this cool, if you want to bail out and go to the buy station, you have those two options. Personally, I'd like to go to the buy station, get some UAVs up to get a little bit more of, a, of an idea of what's going on. Also, I'd like to get some ammunition because in my HCR, I've got 12 bullets. But unfortunately, I get distracted talking to chat. I don't make the call and we end up pushing the fight. And here it is. So we're pushing the enemies. Good knock for my teammate. Now look at this man here. Oh, you hate to see it. All right, let's talk about this fight real quick. The first problem lies that he's challenging us. He's fighting us and his teammate is next to him, but he's not there to help. So right now, since he's not shooting at us, if he decides he doesn't want to help, if he decides he's in a bad spot, right now he needs to be running. Unfortunately, he doesn't. He thinks about it, rechallenge, which slows down his momentum, and he just proceeds to turn his back to us and run. Now, if we're, look at the mini map. If we're over here, why would the enemy run left? If you're running from the enemy, if you're running from a bad fight, it's fine, but make sure you're running away from them, not back into them. Because even if I wouldn't have knocked this dude, my team would have got him because he literally rounded right back to him. And especially since his teammate was literally to the right-hand side too, because they could have two stacked me and this fight would not have been as uh, flipped as it actually was. Even though I died, I did get the kills. My team wiped the team. But again, if he would have made a right-hand turn right here, which his way back to his team member who is relatively close, this would have been a lot better situation because then my team would be in a 2v3. They wouldn't be cracked. They wouldn't be knocked. It would be a more balanced fight. But here is another issue. The moment I get the knock, I see the enemy and I just go ahead and take the shots at him like any oh other God. human would, but I know better. I should have switched to my HCR and initially got the fight taken care of. Problem right here is you see me break away and I break away safely. Remember, I have teammates to my right. Unfortunately, my ego got the best of me and despite the enemy having full plates and me having a sliver of health, um, I decided to reach out with one of the slower ADSing guns in the world. So I hit the drop shot right here to give me a little bit of time with the slow ADS speed. I move my body. So again, the enemy's shooting over me right now. He does end up correcting, but it gets me the time to crack him instead of just instantly dying. Remember, he was fully plated. I was not. In the time it took me to crack him, he was finally hit his first shot. So this just shows you right here how important it is to be drop shotting and maintaining movement when fighting. Unfortunately, though, I do go down because I'm a bay back bitch. I right, saw so about the gulag real quickly. I always do the same strat. Go up middle, get a lot of intel if they're coming top, if they're coming bottom, if they're coming mid. Right here, I'm looking in this door, but my eyes are also glancing up in this direction. And I'm going to end up throwing a snapshot. snapshot. That way, if the enemy is pushing me close and I can't hear him, this will pick him up. So normally, I'll wait for this to go off before I make my move backwards. But I heard his audio. I heard his footstep. And I just simply react. Bounce around the corner and I still play this a little bit to where I'm sidestepping. So when I am fighting him, I get close to this box to where if he gets some good shots off on me and, and now all of a sudden I'm at a disadvantage, I can bounce back and get to safety and maybe, I don't know, play my life a little bit better. 
Enemy kind of does the same thing. He plays that a little bit. He put himself out there a little too much. And again, I just came around the corner with such aggression. He wasn't expecting it. He didn't anticipate it. And his reaction time just wasn't up to par. All right, here I am coming back. This is how to, I guess, personal regain. So I noticed there's a lot of people on the map. My team's on the other side and I'm landing over here. Now this is pretty risky. Now that my, my loadout is here. That's one of the reasons, but I have a Gulag weapon and I love Gulag weapons. I go to land on this guy and he's already damaged so not really much there but i do now have the high ground and i have visual and everything going on around me unfortunately there was another guy hiding in the building thankfully my teammates there smoking me out i have my other two teammates close by that way they can cover in case they end up pushing us and I know there's a guy in here and I don't have plates. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to try to fight with whatever I can fight with. And, you know, once a camper, always a camper. And they're, they're just special, right? There's a special breed of player that I just don't get. You're going to double Claymore that staircase right there. And not move at all. Now, I don't believe that was the, the guy that cracked me. That was the dude that landed on the rooftop. So I'm not too worried about him. All right, but now it's time to get my loady. I I've wasted a lot of time looking for these fights with bullshit weapons and not much loot. There's a guy just laying here doing God knows what. Get an easy knock on him. And then I start getting shot at by his teammates. So of course I just put myself on the other side of the loadout. I'm not gonna challenge him with this pistol. I'm gonna grab my loadout because I'm tired of this shit and try to get the fight won and we are able to do so. All right, so the circle's rotated and we know we need to get our ass to the hill right we have got to go to the mountains in the desert to really get safe and better position so we're going to of course work our way there unfortunately for us we get into a fight things are exploding shit is happening we have no intel i don't know how many enemies there are i don't know what else they have that could explode claymore's betty's i don't know how many teams there are so before i just push in and send to my death i want to again gather intel i noticed this crouch walking kyle over here just doing what crouch walkers do best refusing to adapt and learn and just crouch walking everywhere and he's just an easy kill and again just changing my body my body's angles just dropping to the floor making him look down was too much for him and he got out shot this is where movement comes into play real quick and i kind of stopped in the middle of that so let's rewind just simply going for execute and i back off now this is the problem with going for executes again i don't know where these guys are i don't know if he's got teammates and yes we have a uav but Stealth vest, ghost, so many things, who knows? So saying that, I shouldn't have gone for that. I should have looked before I just tunnel vision on the execute because it almost cost me my life. Now I know this player's in the building and I also know I have 13 seconds to get this fight won. Fortunately, I didn't know he was on the rooftop even though he pelted me because again, I was tunnel vision on the kill and I wasn't scanning and looking around to see the tracers and to see his body on the rooftop. So he does finally get me. Luckily my team's holding it down with the enemy that was in the building also. And again, zone's moving. We need to get to the hill. So we've got to get out of here. Something big, my teammate was also able to get a kill. I spot the enemy on the rooftop still. So I go back to looking at this. It's kind of a ballsy challenge because in this situation, you really don't want to try to waste your plates. If we can kill this enemy quickly, then sure, let's just bulldoze them. But but right now it's me one on one. My teammate is worrying about other people in Hydro and I'm worrying about this guy. We're separating our focus right now. And again, I don't want to waste my plates because I only have two left. Thank God for high alert in some situations. Now it's hard to balance perks, honestly. Um, I feel like Again, just kind of know how you're playing for the day. Notice your weaknesses. Um, if I feel like I'm dying a lot to just third parties and players I can't see, I'll end up putting on high alert. But for the most part, nowadays especially, I rock cold-blooded. This was, or not cold-blooded, I'm sorry. I rock bullseye. All right, so right now we got a fight going on. We know that we need to rotate out of here. And I'm not going to waste any time because, again, look at it. There's a little shack. If you guys are familiar with the shack, this is not the best cover or concealment. So I wanna go ahead and work my way to better cover and concealment, AKA all these buildings. We do have enemies on our tail right now. So we just have to make a dolphin dive off the ridge. And because they're so far away, they're not gonna really have an angle on us per se. They may hit us a few times, but I'm not worried about them. So I pull up my map, even though I'm mid air, cause I wanna see what the hell is going on and where I wanna go. 
We've been running the whole time, getting shot at and, and dodging bullets and dodging clusters and, and precisions, and it's been wild. So I haven't had time to breathe and get in my map. So this is the most peaceful time I've had now for the last five minutes that we ended up skipping in this video of me just running away from death. But I'm sitting here analyzing. I'm like, okay, I have money. Green has money. Let's try to work our way to the buy. I see the enemies under us. Unfortunately, I do notice that that guy ends up looking at Sutmig and he does take the L there. But again, running on foot or parachuting, parachuting was the best option. Running on foot, the enemy on the hill behind us would have shot down on us. So we lost one teammate, but it's better than a squad wipe. And again, if you're familiar with the update and the, and the, the map layout, the buy is now here. So this is pre-season, whatever the hell we're in. And now we've lost two. Okay, maybe maybe in hindsight, probably now still worth it. 100% still worth it because we still have the money. I have $6,100. Now, right now, Green needs to be making his way back to me as well. I'm still looking for money just in case I can find an extra thousand dollars eleven hundred dollars that way green doesn't have to worry about making his way to the buy he can actually worry about other fights at hand of course it's an easy spot i'm spotting enemies everywhere and i'm not shooting at them per se i'm just marking them for my teammate to let him know what could possibly take place because even though i'm actively not trying to fight these players i'm always going to remain ready Right now, the first and foremost goal is to get our teammate back. We have money. I don't want to force a fight and two stack the solo just on the chance he's able to somehow 1v2 us. Let's get our teammates back before we start playing dumb. So I get a knock up here, easy read, just go for the execute. And remember, there's another player here also because we saw him running across one of the guys I didn't shoot at and I'm able to get that kill. It's probably 80% of my fights, especially close range, I'll hit a drop shot. Close range, almost every time. Medium range, kind of varies long range, fucking never. So right now I'm just throwing blind I'm throwing blind drill charges just in case I can get a hit. That way I can damage the enemy, maybe get an easier kill. Check the corners, making sure the enemy is not close, get a double buyback, instantly work my way back to the high ground. Notice the smoke. May seem small to a lot of people, but you know how many times I've killed players climbing this exact ladder or the other one on the other side because they didn't smoke themselves out? I'm just coming to land. Remember, there's a player around here I don't know about, and there's another one. So there was a player around I didn't know about, so I smoked it out because if he was in a window I didn't check, he could have easily killed me. Now let's rewind and talk about this fight too. I'm all for it. I'm all for going for the res, but they actually got smoked out by my smoke. So when my smoke went off, they should have heard me climb up the ladder. And even if they didn't, he should have instantly stopped resing and watched the ladder. Why else would the smoke go off right here? But he does it. And I'm able to utilize my smoke as a little bit of cover. I'm able to go ahead and sidestep. You notice I drop shot to execute. The only reason was because of other enemies. Even though I'm surrounded by buildings and I could have got shot by them, I just wanted to lower my body so I wasn't an easy headshot for everyone. Advise you move to the safe zone now. Enemy and again, just maintaining movement. Even though we're playing buildings, I don't stop moving for the most part. You'll you'll very rarely see me just sit still unless I'm in a very, very bad spot and I'm waiting for players to rotate in, out, towards us, away from us, whatever the case may be that I need in that situation. Of course, just buying UAV, I'm gonna call it. You see everyone around us. Now, this is gonna be a hard ending no matter what. The, Saeed City's not my favorite place to fight. It's, it's one of the least favorite places to fight. You have a lot of high ground, you have a lot of windows, you have a lot of just every, there's shit everywhere. And then you have water separating it from the other side of the map, so, you could have a water ending, you could have building endings. Either way, none of these endings are easy. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like if you get this position, you're gonna win. It's it's no one's game when it comes to endings like this. Hills, skyscrapers, different story. When you have buildings that are this similar and this much the same, it's it's very different. Now, my teammate does go down, unfortunately. Um, he is AFK right now. So that's why, and I just rewound this just to show you guys. It wasn't a bad play. Was it because we weren't together? He, well, it was, but he was just AFK. RIP. But I'll say, I say all I have to say, I didn't know he was AFK. So I'm going to check back that direction just to see what the hell is going on. And strangely enough, there's a team there. There is a team there. Now, this is a simple gatekeep. And this is, again, the importance of smoke grenades. If he has a smoke, he can survive. If he doesn't have a smoke, he's going to die. 
enemy. Cash here. Remember, guys, smokes win games and saves lives. Stuns will win fights. That's 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 basically it. That's all it'll do. Now that right there got real lucky. Let's just rewind and talk about that real quick. This fight here. I right, said so this was just simple. I just wanted to check up here to see what was going on. An enemy was here, so I ADS and shot. Now I didn't think this was even an enemy. I thought it was like a, a plate box. I don't know. It doesn't look like an enemy. It looks like a bag of trash. But that's exactly what he played like—a bag of trash. He's laying prone. I'm not even shooting him. He has the drop on me. But I just quickly go down because I'm getting shot by somebody and it can't be the guy whose back's to me. And I just shoot him right in the face and mess him up. Bad play by zero. I'm sorry. Bad plays by Gazamatic. Just, just terrible. I'm all for drop shotting, but you don't want to just lay there prone and start from that position because then all I have to do is just stare at you. You stand up. I can still shoot that same spot and at least hit your foot. Change your angles. Don't just lay prone. Don't just crouch. Don't just stay mounted and don't just stand up. Change your angle. Move your, your body. All the ways when you're in the middle of a fight. There's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts to that rule. Now this enemy here too, just trying his best to get some pressure on me with the, with the cluster. A good play. But again, he's not in the best of positions. He's going to have to go on the ground level or challenge me. Right now I want this building. This building's my bitch. I need this building. Why? Well, positioning. It's the highest point in the map. This is it. The this and the building next to it. This and the building next to it. It's the highest position. So I want this. So the enemy does come back out. I don't know what he's doing, honestly. This guy's really not with it because he keeps doing the same thing. He goes over here to challenge me, then runs back. Goes over here to challenge, runs back. This is the third time and I finally had enough and I went ahead and just jumped on his face. Now I'm just checking to see if anyone else is coming out. You know, these crouch walkers out here are just, they're real. Now, one thing to be worrying about is this building over here, because this is technically higher and I have no cover. So I need to really watch this building in front of me. Like it's cute that I'm worried about that door because my teammate is telling me there was an enemy below me. And that's why right there. Luckily, the enemy did not do a good job in that fight. I'm able to survive a little bit and, and win that. Theoretically, I should have lost that fight. Theoretically, this dude had plenty of time to shoot me in the damn face and he didn't. Let's just talk about this fight real quick. In slow-mo, kind of. I'm peeking over here, I'm seeing what's going on, but I know this building still probably got someone on it. Now look, that's his head. Think about the amount of time he's wasting not shooting me here. Here, 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 still not shooting. And then final ADS, he's like, oh, let me shoot back. Come on, man. And at this point too, you're playing a heady. My entire body's vulnerable. You should not miss. I should. And I do a little bit, but because he's not moving, because he's not sidestepping, he's not jumping, not drop shotting, not whatever. He's just committing to the mount. He gets absolutely beamed, unmounts and jump, drops back, and then it's a simple drill charge. And But then on top of that, the enemy re-challenges way too soon. So just simply, uh, even if I wouldn't have shot him, he would have died to the drill charge nonetheless. All right, but now we have to get out of here. I have a durable gas mask. We have 46 seconds for the circle to collapse. And again, look at this ending. This is not an easy one. Tents, carousels. It, it's all garbage. This building's the only one with real hard, genuine cover. It's the one you want, but unfortunately, it's where the enemies are. Right now, instead of just jumping, I'm playing my gas mask. I'm playing my gas mask because, again, remember earlier I told you my teammate told me there was a guy under me. I never killed him. I have no idea where he went. So I'm checking to make sure. And lo and behold, there, there we go. And even though I knock him, I still take a little time, reload my guns, make sure I'm squared away before I push down and put myself in a bad situation. All right, so now I'm just playing the, this car carousel. It's not the best cover in the world, but I just want to get eyes on enemies. There are three teams left right now. So we have a team in orange building for sure. They're the only ones. And now we're forced to relocate because of that. I'm throwing drill charges at the tent in case the enemy's in there. Realistically, I should have threw one at this wall that I'm next to. I'm going to let this play out and then we're going to talk about each individual mistake that I make because when it's in game, we all have tendencies to panic when you shouldn't. Or if it's not panic, we have tendencies to overthink and not do the simplest things. It is a 2v2, by the way. It's now a 2v1. Kwesi's got a knock. 
see the enemy jump over the fence. I'm hesitating. I'm panicking when I shouldn't be. Now I have a knock. Now it's 2v1. It's a 2v1 right here. And unfortunately, I go down. Now what went wrong? Well, it went wrong basically the moment I went to the gas. Right here, I'm utilizing my gas mask. My gas mask breaks and now I panic. I have smoke grenades. I should have smoked myself up, plated, reloaded, and been good to go. I only have two plates, but I just walked over plates that for some reason didn't get picked up. I could have turned around and picked those up. I could have entered this fight with plates. Then I could have pushed this building with a smoke. I didn't either. I sat here, got an easy kill, and I assumed that the other player was not that good. And he ended up jumping around the corner and absolutely just running me. And now my team late is left in a fight with, it's a 1v2, and it's a situation where the enemy does self res and now he's got a 1v2. So mistakes for me straight up, they did nothing wrong. My comms were basically non-existent in game. I failed to utilize smokes, I failed to play it up, and I played the fight completely wrong, which cost us this easy game. Remember, it was a 2v1, and, and then we lost. So we th I threw hard, I won't say we, I threw hard in this fight, but again, I want you guys to learn from mistakes. The reason why we don't post the best gameplays always are just because you can learn more from mistakes than you can just from watching someone drop 20s, 30s, 40s, and 60s. It's cool, it's fun, you'd like to do it. At the end of the day, if we're all making these same damn mistakes, you're never gonna get to that level. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like on it. Subscribe today. But until next time, y'all have a good one and good luck in Warzone.